Back on the Chamber Report, time now to meet the new chair of the Board of Directors. He has been a player on the Board of Directors for a while, but he has taken the big chair for the 21-22 Chamber year. His name is Chris Randall. He is with First Bank Elk River. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pete. Nice to be here. Uh, so these folks don't know who you are, so let's talk first about First Bank Elk River. Give us a little bit of history of the bank and what you do there. Well, First Bank Elk River is a family-owned community bank. It's been uh, originated in uh, Elk River um, about 110 years ago. Um, it's owned by the Holton family. Um, John Holton is still the uh, president of the holding company. Um, I've been with the bank for uh, about eight and a half years, um, and I'm officed out of the Anoka location as a commercial lender um, and uh, enjoy working with the bank and enjoy being part of the community banking scene here in Anoka County. And, uh, broader area as well. And how, how is the commercial lending scene? I mean, COVID is on everybody's mind. It, we just can't get rid of talking about it. How, how has it been through that whole time? And what do you think looks like heading to the future? Well, you know, 15 months ago, there was a, a lot of uncertainty as to what was going to be going on with businesses, and, and business owners certainly faced a lot of challenges. Um, our bank, along with many of the other banks in the community, uh, participated in the Paycheck Protection Program, or the PPP loans, as they're referred to. Um, so that certainly kept us busy. Um, and kind of coming out of that, we are seeing a high demand uh, in commercial real estate in particular. Um, real uh, Interest rates are very low right now. Um, so we've been very proud that we were able to help out a number of businesses. Uh, we originated, I believe, over 120 PPP loans at First Bank Elk River. Um, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, that doesn't make us particularly unique. Um, but that was uh, certainly an opportunity for us to get out, help our customers, uh, help the community. Um, and now we're looking to kind of get back to lending uh, in more traditional manners, obviously. Yeah. And uh, some of that demand has been... Um, more uh, you know, popular than others. For instance, the commercial lending and uh, commercial real estate, as I stated, has been very, very busy. Um, equipment lending has not been maybe as, uh, as, uh, as in demand, uh, particularly because businesses are kind of flush with cash right now. Um, but we are seeing uh, businesses make year-end decisions and buying uh, what there may be available as there you know, uh, has been a lot of equipment that has been purchased. Um, so we're seeing increased demand here as we come to year-end, which is fairly typical on equipment. You know, and, and for me, and, and I wonder if you're hearing the same things that I am, I mean, I'm hearing about a positivity going into 22. I think overall the business climate in the area is, is fairly uh, strong. Uh, businesses certainly have done very well. I think far better than they expected to be yeah. doing for the most part. Um, you know, I think interest rates right now are, are kind of the, the, the linchpin of the economy or the, the you know, where things are going to move up or down. Um, but right now we do see a good, a favorable environment for interest rates. Uh, certainly inflation is uh, playing a role sure. um, and that's uh, probably some guarded optimism, but I, I think home builder sentiment seems to be fairly strong still. Um, maybe a slight pause here in the late summer and early fall, um, but we do see some of that activity kind of picking up as well as we move into the new year. So I would say things are uh, encouraging, um, but I think people are also being pragmatic with their decisions at this point. Yeah, and you have to be. I, I, I totally get that. Chris, if somebody out there watching is like, you know what, I want to I want to talk to this guy. I got some a potential lending questions, how, how would they get a hold of you? I can be found at the First Bank Elk River uh, in Anoka. Um, you certainly reach out to us there. Uh, our website has all our phone numbers on it and that would be, uh, or email, um, and I can be reached via you know phone or email as well. So um, at uh, my phone number, 763-712-7860. Um, that's my uh, desk number there. Or uh, email crandall at elkriver.bank. Great. So, family guy? Yes. Very busy time of the year for us. I bet it is. Um, we, we seem to move uh, from one season to another kind of relative to sports. So uh, the different seasons kind of correspond to sports. So I'm spending uh, less of my time outdoors. I'm a pretty avid hunter, uh, bird hunter in the fall. Um, that's kind of transitioning now to being on the slopes uh, with my son who's a downhill skier um, and my, uh, his twin sister who's a basketball player and then also uh, getting around to soccer. We do in, in a lot of indoor soccer training in the off season as well. So. 
and, and Chris, I've done this with other chairs. If you don't mention your wife's name and your kid's name, you're going to be in trouble. So let's just get that out of the way for show. Sure. Well, my beautiful wife, uh, she's uh, Michelle Randall. Um, she's actually been very busy. She is a, a photographer, um, and uh, I'm happy to have her back now. The fall is a very busy time for her as a, as a photographer, um, doing uh, people's pictures for their Christmas cards. So I'm glad that she's uh, wrapped that up now so she can kind of uh, relax and have some time, a little bit of a slowdown. Um, and then my three children I have a 15 year old daughter who's a sophomore at St. Francis Senior High School, Ava, and then we've got two 13 year olds, uh, Nolan and Addison, uh, who are uh, seventh graders at the middle school in St. Francis and are excited for winter and the, the oncoming snow. You're a busy guy. Quite I busy, yes. remember the time, mine are much older now, but I do remember and it was go, 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 and, uh, and I know you are, but enjoy every second of it. All right, let's talk Chamber Board. Uh, First Bank has always been a major player at the Anoka Area Chamber of Commerce. Uh, you jumped um, into the scene um, two plus years ago, as you said, you know what, uh, yeah, I wanna be on the Board of Directors. And then you took the next step, which said, yeah, I wanna be the Vice Chair, all knowing that you were gonna become Chair. So here we are. Um, one of the early things that we did, in fact, your first meeting was our planning meeting in September. We started talking about the strategy to action plan. The Board just wrapped up finalizing that. And know this, people, um, it's a plan. So you have hopes, but what, I can guarantee you that in September of 2019, we didn't have COVID on the strategy to action plan. And this is one of the things that I've been most impressed with in my time at the chamber is the fact that the board can be reactionary and do what they've got to do for things that they don't know is coming up. But talking about what is coming up and the things that we are aware of and some things that we wanted to get done, one of the things that we're looking at is social media and, and what we do and maybe where we want to go. Yeah. The one of the big agenda items that we took to, uh, took uh, away from our meeting in September was uh, to update our social media platforms um, that we use so that we are easier to access for uh, the public and also for our members. Uh, we want to be a resource that the members of the community can find us and then also our members that are you know on the chamber or in the chamber can also find resources for them and we understand the value of that especially in COVID uh, during the COVID period where information was not always as easy to get as one would like. Um, so we've understood that there is a need for us to be a conduit and to be a centralized location for people to get that information, so. You know, we do have some. I mean, we're obviously on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, but you know, am I gonna be doing TikTok videos soon? I don't know, that's up to this guy and the rest of those people. But we're gonna look at all of what's out there and, and this is something we should always do. And this is uh, one of the pieces that the board's gonna deal with this year. Another one is, we've always been a network um, advocate. We put things together. Uh, and talking about, you know, when are we ready to jump back in full bore with networking and maybe what new could be, and that's another thing you're going to look at. Yeah, we continue to look at the networking opportunities that we provide and offer, and I know that we had many conversations over COVID, how do we maintain a networking presence when we are not allowed to get together and congregate in large groups? Um, so we've invested in some means to make uh, the ability to enable the chamber to have uh, Zoom networking meetings. And, and there's more to that than just saying you wanna have a Zoom meeting for networking. You gotta make sure you have the capacity to be able to you know, bring in 50 people into that type of environment. So we've, we've made some investments, I think, in technology that allow us to do that. It also kind of plays into the, the prior comments that we made about our, 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 our social media platforms and we're looking forward and you know, we, the term now kind of is meta, uh, the metaverse, you know, what can we do? And so I think we've adjusted well to making sure that our network opportunities are forward thinking also. It is also important, we have realized though, to be, uh, to network in person, clearly. And um, at our most recent meeting, in addition to the September meeting, uh, we have explored um, opportunities to kind of get back to our more traditional networking events. Um, and we're very excited about that because they offer uh, people one, an opportunity to get together face to face, but it allows us to support other area businesses and members of the chamber as well. When we have a networking event, we do it at a, at a local watering hole or restaurant. So there's a, 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 a benefit to, to not only the people that are networking, but also to our members as they get to experience that you as bet. well. What Chris is talking about is our mixed networking event which has been on pause since uh, COVID hit. And the board just gave approval that in the first quarter, we are going to have a mixed networking event. 
haven't picked a, a location yet as to where that's going to be held, but it'll be a four to six event. Uh, trust me, it'll be up on the website, and if you remember, you will hear about it, but an opportunity for an in-person. And Chris is right. Now, we've been Zooming ever since, and I didn't know what I thought Zoom meant and what Zoom turned out to be is two different things. So obviously we got into Zoom right away, but it was being done off my laptop. So I'd pick the laptop up, give it over to Chris, and then Chris could, and the board said, you know what, we, we need to do this better, and especially for the long term. So they just did an investment and we did, uh, um, did some changes and, and it, it, trust me, we didn't spend a ton of money, but we spent some money that was needed to do uh, the best that we could do as a nonprofit. Uh, obviously, Chris, lastly, always trying to grow a chamber, so we'll be looking at that down the road as to what we can do to uh, grow the chamber. The board will get together and talk about it, whether that's a membership drive, but if you're not growing as an organization, there's issues and uh, we always want to be growing. We always want to be growing. We, we, one thing that we learned and, and one of the takeaways that I had from a lot of the meetings that we had during COVID with you was that unfortunately some chambers were not able to, to continue. They didn't yeah. make it, they didn't survive. Yeah. And we want to make sure that, you know, we've been around since I think 1952. Um, and we want to make sure that we've got another 70 uh, years ahead of us. And so uh, as we look to that, enabling or ensuring that we continue to grow is important for us. Um, you know, we strive to be a top 10 chamber within the Twin Cities or in the state, and we're right around that area right now, I think 11. Um, and so our goal is to be in that top 10, and that requires uh, us to continue with a focus on growth. Yep, and we will do that. Hey, Chris, thank you for stepping up. You don't have to step up, you step up. Uh, the bank has always been an incredible player with us and they've always stepped up for us. You took it an extra step and that is appreciated. So away we go, you are, uh, uh, your first quarter is just about to be done of your chamber year. So uh, come back uh, maybe next month if we can get you and give an update on what's going on. I look forward to it, Pete. Thank you very much for the opportunity. He is Chris Randall. He is chair of the board of directors. He's the big guy. He runs the meetings. He does it all. All right, we are taking a break. When we come back, you'll like it best. Member profiles, and we'll get into it right after this.